So I am by myself today, so <laughs> hopefully all goes well. Um, I'm going to get started and um, hopefully people join us as we go along. So again, thank you, uh, Li Kuei, for joining us today. And um, so today I'm going to be covering the digital portfolio management. Uh, so it's not a deep dive, it's an overview, but hopefully it gives you enough information to encourage you to explore and get started with your adoption. Uh, I don't think I'll be talking about the future in this session, but because I do, just remember, uh, I often do get into the future. So before I, you know, this is what I call uh, the slide to ensure that if I talk about the future, don't make any future purchasing decisions on what's coming in the future. Um, I will put, let me just put the link in the chat as well. So um, you can use the scan code. Um, hang on a second, let me just put it into a smaller window, maybe. Oops, give me a second. Uh, I'll show the links in the, afterwards when I stop sharing my screen because I only have one screen today and the technology is not very supportive. Uh, but if you use the click the, the barcode uh, here, you'll be um, directed to our ITSM page or our Live on ServiceNow page on our community. And uh, we have plenty of sessions coming up. So Next week, for instance, we're doing uh, workforce optimization. The week after, we're going to be doing a DevOps workshop. So if you're interested in understanding what we are doing with DevOps in ServiceNow or what's the product that we have to help you support your DevOps uh, developers uh, in your organization, um, that would be a good session uh, for that where we expect to we will be running a lab that was run at um, Knowledge. So that's uh, going to give you a hands-on experience on how to get start started with setting up your pipelines. Uh, and then uh, at the end of June, we're doing a process optimization workshop as well, or presentation. And then we'll start again. Our, all of our sessions are already planned for July and August. So they're going to be updating the Live on Service Now page as well with all of the future sessions coming up. So. Hopefully, you can come and join us on one of those as well. Okay. Actually, I tried to look at the schedule. So, uh, because I'm working from Malaysia, so my time zone will be GMP plus eight. So, it is normally like if US is a morning, so my time will be evening. Actually, I have reviewed through the events. I have signed up so some of it. So, if you look for yeah. the APAC one, the APAC yep. one comes into the APJ, the Singapore mm. time zone. So, we cover, right. uh, so we cover Australia, mm. uh, uh, India, and Japan. So, um, if you just look for the sessions with APAC, these runs into a time zone that's suitable for us in this uh, part of the world. All right. <laughs> AMS, they have, we try to tie some of the sessions with AMS as well. Um, and that's, um, you know, uh, and, and it allows for people who cannot attend these sessions to repeat them across the world. So, uh, but if you look for the APAC, these are delivered in your, in your time zone. So that's about, uh, at this time of the year, it's 11.30 our time. Mm, right. Very good. Uh, which is uh, 9 a.m. in India. So that's the reason why it's a bit later uh, over lunch for us, because we need to go <laughs> to India. And at the same time, that'd be too late for uh, Australia and New Zealand. Mm, right. Multiple time zones to cope with. <laughs> we have seven and a half hours. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's a bit tricky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I could understand more then. All right. Thanks. For, uh, thank you very much uh, for the details. It's absolutely just between us. So uh, forget about uh, we're going to be chatting and hopefully you learn something. And um, the presentation will be uploaded as well in the community afterwards. So uh, I'm sure we've we've talked before. So I've been with ServiceNow. I'm going to be celebrating 10 years very soon. Um, and uh, before that, I was a customer of ServiceNow, so I've always been in the IT service management industry. I've been there since um, early 2000. And um, 
as part of the product management team, so I'm, I lead the outbound product management for our ITSM and DevOps BU. And it's really to help our customer, our existing customer drive adoption of the uh, capabilities they're entitled to. Uh, and so I do spend a lot of time on enabling our customers, our partners, and all of the people in the field. So my focus this year, what I'm trying to bring to the fore are very new products, especially those that are related to our AI capabilities. Uh, but obviously the service operation workspace, the DevOps, the digital portfolio process optimization and workforce optimization are the, pro, you know, the, the um, products that we're trying to bring awareness, um, more awareness for, for customers. And very often they, they just make a, a headline into um, uh, the, the, the release broadcast for customers need to find out, you know, what can I do with that product? And these sessions are here for that and we're there to help. So I'm just gonna launch a poll. I know it's just us, uh, but just to see where you are as well. And um, if you can just uh, tell me what's your view on, on the poll. Okay, good. So you've started your your journey, um, and uh, so you're looking into adopting. So that's very good. So this session is for you. So make sure to make the best of it. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. So that quote may actually resonate with you or with some of your leaders in your organization. Sorry. Oop. All right, I've gone backward here. Don't know why. So uh, I don't have a good way to determine my service health. Um, if my phone is not ringing, my email is not burning up and there aren't any tickets in my queue, I make the assumption rightly or wrongly that my customers are happy. Uh, I think that's, uh, uh, you know, we've made up that quote based on a lot of feedback that we receive from uh, the customers that we interact around the world in our in our. Um, uh, design partner programs or in a product advisory council. That's something, some of the feedback that we hear. And, and I think um, that may resonate with you as well. Let me know what you think. Yep. <laughs> the same way. <laughs> the same way. Yeah. So some of the reason why uh, some of our leaders in our IT organization feel this way, it's it's very complex program uh, problems, right? So um, first of all, our services and our apps, there's no central place for them. They're in different places in our organization. We don't have a full catalog of the services and the apps that we distribute to our customers. Uh, we don't know. Many customers don't have a comprehensive CMDB that they can use to manage their services and apps and really be proactive in that service delivery. The other part that adds the complexity is that we all have disparate tools across our IT estates to do, um, to deliver our services. And that's um, having these different tools really adds to complexity uh, because we don't have any real time data. So we're always working on, you know, backward data, very difficult to make uh, real improvements when you are different, um, different sets of utilities and tools that you're doing. Uh, some of the things that add to the complexity, and especially we see that as customers are adopting the DevOps way of delivering software to their, or solutions to their customers, we find that the work has become even more siloed with shadow IT being built within business units to be able to deliver faster. Uh, and with that, we even, you know, as, a, as an IT manager, it's becoming even more difficult uh, to have visibility into the uh, technical and operational uh, dependencies that are there. Um, and some of the things that uh, uh, also creates complexities, the different, com you know, very complicated setups. So time consuming to set up what I own in ServiceNow and, and the lack of guidance that we have and how it should be done. So these are, um, we've been through multiple product advisory council with you know customers like yourself, Blake One, and uh, try to understand what are their pain points. I think um, it summarizes these four major points 
uh, summarizes the complexity that our customers are facing. Do you have uh, Do you have a different opinion? No, I'm on the same page. <laughs> and You're on the said, same page. Yes, that's why we are trying, still trying to work. Uh, uh, work smarter and then uh, we do have consultant from service now to help us that's why uh, our target also we try to optimize and make things more digitalization and yeah. then I think the first point is there's no central place to view and collect collectively manage my service and application that is exactly it. so that yeah. is where uh, where we embark into CMDB and even right now I would say that not really matured yet so CMDB is really helpful uh, especially um, to monitor our services, you know, the apps help and discovery for the network, everything. So that's where we have facing so much uh, what you have pointed in the slide here before. And mm -hmm. even now we do have, uh, I think the third point silo work because uh, we do have outsource our, our works, our support teams to the vendor. So there are times that we still feel there are things that they are working silo. So, but we try to utilize ServiceNow and then provide more training to them. So get yeah. them aligned with our process, and procedure, how to update, and also through the optimization as much as possible. Automation, automate some of the reports so that we can do much more monitoring. I think those is pretty helpful. And my boss just came back from conference, knowledge conference. And then oh, said, very good. Yeah. So he said, well, we got lots of things we can do, this and that. So we were very excited. So therefore, for me, because I'm working from Malaysia, I couldn't yeah. attend the conference. So much more that I can do and the best that I can do is I try to see, I know the events, series of events that are being organized online. So that's why I try to check out the time that can fit for yeah. my availability. So I try to join. Very good. So which organization are you with, Lee Kwan? Mway. Mway, okay. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, so, well, that's very exciting. And that's what happens a lot when, when our managers go to knowledge, they get back with full ideas and we need to help them um, yes. deliver on some of the things that they've seen. Right. Um, you know, what I, what I like to say is very often our customers are looking at service now, you know, like, you, you, you know, you look at Excel and the amount of work that you do in mm. Excel and all of the capabilities that Excel can do for you. And you use about 10% or maybe 15% if you're, you know, if you're quite clever with Excel. But, you know, that's what customers do with ServiceNow. They do, you know, they have this thing that has so much capability and so much power and they do it for incident management, maybe a little bit of request fulfillment, but it, it takes time for them to adopt and, and really uh Trains really digitally transform their IT right. organization and their organization as well because um, you need you, the, the change often starts in, in technology in technology management and then you can really extend to other areas as well. Agree with you. All right. So what is so let's go and look at what is a digital portfolio management and and what I like to call it. It's I like to call it a data aggregator for your services. So it really is that unified workspace that allows the service owner uh, to holistically view and collectively manage their services, the apps, the products throughout their life cycle. So basically from an idea uh, to, you know, creating a pro, making that idea to a demand, that demand into a project, that project into a release, that release into uh, an app in production and how you support it with the incident, the changes and all of that together. And so that's what, until you retire your service um, and you decommission the hardware or the software that's associated with it. So this is that full life cycle. And as a service owner you're, you're, or a solution owner, uh, you can have uh, a portfolio that are considered products, apps, um, and uh, making sure that you manage them. Uh, you may not be the owner at the enterprise level, but you may be a, an owner at the service offering level. And this is where uh, you can use a digital portfolio to really manage those services more effectively. So what you need to remember from this slide is that this is a unified workspace for getting all of the data that you have about the services that you own. So one of the things we look at is how do we call the person or what is the target persona for that particular application? And going through a number of product advisory council, working with a number of customers, we landed on the word or the expression 
solution owners because uh, basically they, they are accountable for one or more services uh, that's our application products and uh, they are accountable for the delivery, the continual improvement associated with that, uh, any kind of future planning, budgeting for that particular services. Um, and, uh, and, and again, it's not just services, it's also what is called application and products. So what they do as part of their responsibilities, we translate business need into an actionable roadmap. They manage operational performance. They prove the value to the solution and they manage uh, the need uh, of customers and stakeholders. And they bring innovation to the organization. So when I went through with that product to the product advisory council, talking to many of our customers, some of the things um, that uh, in very, very large organization, there is often a segregation of duty between the people who do the run the business. So that's the normally all the, the technical supports for applications or uh, technology services. And then you had to build the business, which is basically your developers, your program managers, your project managers, et cetera. Uh, what we find with customers is that that segregation of duty, which is you know, quite well established in many of the large banks that we work is not necessarily so common in many of the other organizations. And because some of them can also be outsourced, uh, it becomes very difficult to have that segregation of duties between the run and build. And so the solution owner is that person that bridge between the two worlds um, and we find that that digital portfolio really helps them uh, because what we have as an application in the application portfolio, what we have in the as strategic portfolio management, what we have in our CMDB, um, our service portfolio in the ITSM space, they were not really joined up. And so the CSDM framework is there to help in the nomenclature of all of the services. Uh, and at the same time, the persona became known as a solution uh, owner. Now, I'm going to launch a poll. I'd like to hear from you. I mean, you know, I'm just going to take the poll uh, just because, oh, I should have stopped sharing this. Um, let's see if I can do that again. I mean, I know you can give me the answers probably faster as well. Um, and so what I've done here is really pull what we often hear from our customers. So terms like, well, we don't have a solution owners, but we have those service managers or we call them service delivery managers, or we do have a service owners or portfolio owner. You may have all of these different terms and it's okay if you say we have all of the above. Um, yes. We have all so, of the yeah, we do have portfolio owners and application owners as well. Okay, yeah, uh, that's good to hear. Um, so I guess I should have made multiple choice <laughs> on my <laughs> on my poll. I'll remember that for next time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so portfolio owner, you said, and application owners. Good. Um, but your application owners, do they actually manage um, the changes or the major incidents or even the incidents? Are they interested in that? Or mm, Okay, so if application owner in my organization is more to application, let's say change or incident, um, I think the closest we can say should be service delivery man manager. Okay. Yeah, so that uh, that kind of resonates all these words. Uh, we we come across these roles quite often in our customers. So. All right, so what I've been talking about with digital portfolio is really the solution owners, is really that bridge that brings um, all of the data that comes from the different parts of ServiceNow. And that's why the common service data model is so critical uh, because it really helps uh, get to the... Um, um, it really helps to get to the 
so I just lost my screen for a second here, um, to uh, getting all of the data up. So basically what we do with the, with the digital portfolio, we aggregate the data from you know, our SPM, from our enterprise uh, architects that are managing these application and APM, the application portfolio management. That's part of our strategic portfolio management um, business units. Then we have everything that comes from service management. So all of the incident, the outages, the changes, the service, the offerings. Um, and then we're also picking up some uh, of the elements from our ITOM, uh, basically all of the observability, the discovery and health of our CIs and services. And so it gives us uh, like a, a clear, um, from, from it gives us a holistic view of what's happening. Uh, it to our services that we own. So again, next. So some of the key capability I'll take you through in the demo uh, includes the uh, enterprise portfolio, the personal portfolio, and then we'll go through the services, the business application, the application services, and we'll go through the life cycle, the roadmap, and the service impact. So let me just stop sharing that screen. And then hopefully my demo hub will be kind to me and uh, we'll share again. So can you, you can see my screen? Yep, I can see. Okay. Welcome, Joe. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm on uh, using Chrome. I am on ServiceNow, uh, Utah instance i'm logged in as uh, jose hamilton jose hamilton in our demo data is our solution owner uh, what you see here is the landing page of the digital portfolio management and one of the things that we bring to the home page uh, is what needs attention so all of what needs attention uh, is here uh, basically to uh, all of the P1 incidents. If you want the P2, we can bring them here as well. Uh, that's a configuration. So we're bringing the critical uh, incident, the outages, um, and you, know, you can actually select. So if we have changes, we don't have any changes happening. Uh, we can go and look at the critical incidents. Uh, if there are outages, we're gonna be showing them so are you using um the outage record in uh when you do a major incident um yes we we not really directly use the outage for major incident critical incident but only when we do it for event management so it will shows outages other than that if any critical incident we do it um manually so we just like uh communicate outside from service now Okay, so it doesn't so have outage do. records within yeah, that. Yeah, so if you it want to calculate, create. so the outage, so we do have the outage record. Right, I can see, I could see that. So that's the plan that uh, in future, yeah. because yeah, should we utilize that so that we can get more uh, proper report analysis and statistics. So, so if you want to have service availability, right, you have the outage record, and then you can right. plan, you can look at your, you know, if you have an, a plan outage, for instance. Um, you right. can create uh, a plan outage record, uh, and you can also do that for your major incident. Even if your service is still available but degraded, you can have mm. a degradation record. All right, we can create that, that. That helps create your, um, you know, you to measure your availability. All right, That's right. Something that for you to keep in mind. Mm. Um, and then, if you are using uh, GRC uh, and you have audit and risk. Uh, you will bring them in. So I, I don't have any data, record data for those uh, in the system. And that's because of my demo data. Uh, you can, if you don't have uh, our integrated risk solution, when you roll out DPM, you would hide these two options. You would set them to false in the admin and um, you know they would disappear. So you would just show the items that are relevant. Uh, at the same time, you can bring things like contracts if the uh, solution owners also need to have visibility uh, on contracts that they own or that they manage. So, for instance, if they have a service contracts with a provider 
um, or service contract. Yeah, so with, with a vendor, um, they, you can actually bring these items to be visible in the portfolio and those that need attention, you can create those as well. So it's not limited to only what's here. Um, and so we have a personal portfolio and an enterprise for portfolio. So let's go and, and look at our uh, enterprise uh, portfolio. Uh, so here, when we are here, let me just go one step back. So what we can do here, so this is demo data. Um, and uh, again, don't look at the quality of the data, but for what it is available and what you can okay, do. Okay, sure. Uh, so uh, here what we have is that um, uh, wall cart service portfolio, and that includes these different uh, services associated with it. Uh, what it gives you here is your availability. And so in order to measure your availability, this is where the outage record uh, will come in. And then that snapshot here, it uh, gives you a short description of your portfolio, who is the service portfolio owner, the, the portfolio manager, how many subscribers that you have. So you know exactly if there's a total outage to one of the services within uh, how many of the people that would potentially be impacted by that outage or failure. Uh, and the CSATS record associated with it. So all of these metrics, um, it, there are already predefined, there are calculations uh, already happening. So I can share some of the uh, information uh, in, let me just see, in the chat, let me see what I can find in terms of, um, so that's the need attention panel. I'm just gonna add that to the chat. Just, um, to the chat. And so you see all the KPIs that we use. Uh, and another thing I'd like to share with you. Uh, uh, so that's a need attention panel, I should say, sorry. I pasted the wrong one. So this is, um, yep. Okay, I can get the link, thank you. So, with these links, you're able to get to our product documentation information and see how you would set up your needs attention page and what are the KPIs here. And the KPI group is actually gonna be giving you insight as to all of these metrics are calculated, all right? Um, so that's the enterprise portfolio. Now, uh, why do we have, so when you came back here to the homepage, we had something called the personal portfolio. And you may ask, what is a personal portfolio? Uh, and one of the things, you know, uh, you may be an IT manager, or you may be a solution, you know, a, a service delivery manager. So you don't own the, um, you know, the enterprise. You're not listed as an owner of the service or the application in the CMDB. Therefore, you don't see it. However, you need to manage some of the services. I'm, I'm thinking like the typical regional IT person. Um, so they, they don't own the VPN, they don't own you know, the Zoom, they don't own any of these, the conferencing service. However, they're the target if it's not available for their, uh, you know, for their sites. And so you would create service offerings for that. And these, you know, your IT manager can create a, a personal portfolio of the service offerings that he needs to have for his particular you know, realm of responsibility. So that's where you would uh, create personal portfolio. A personal portfolio can come with any kind of application that is relevant to you. And again, you don't own, you, you still need, uh, it's all controlled by ACL. So you still need to have access to the underlying data to be able to bring it to the portfolio. So uh, here we have one that's already pretty much set up. Um, it's called the e-commerce services and app portfolio. That's a big one that um, uh, Jose is managing. So we can go into one of the business services that we have, which is the Porsche online, uh, which is one of the services that um, uh, 
manages all of the online orders. So hopefully the data will load. It's a bit slow. I have a very mini uh, instance and it's a demo instance. So uh, as a service, uh, as a solution owner, uh, I can see my actual portfolio. Uh, so it's owned by me. So I own this one. Uh, if I go let me just see, uh, there's nothing in the roadmap, so it's probably not going to give me anything. While it loads, I'll stay here. You've got your backlog. So I have 38 items into the backlog. Uh, so it didn't find it because I did not have a roadmap for it. Uh, with that, and, and that's I'm on the plan phase. So I can see everything that is on the back, backlog for that particular service. Um, so I know we've got 12 ideas, we've got two approved demand, we have one project starting, we have a new improvement initiative. So that's all in the plan, plan stage. Uh, so you can go and see all of the demands that have been approved and those that are being screening at the moment. So from an idea, how do you take your idea into demand? This is a filtering process that happens in strategic portfolio. Of course, if you don't have uh, if you don't use a strategic portfolio, you you would hide that information. You would ha hide that that uh, plan uh, because it's not relevant for your organization. If the data is not in service now, it's not really going to help you. Um, again, so what we have here in the build is the project is happening. Uh, we are building using the Agile 2.0 application. We're using uh, stories um, and um, and the release train. And so you can look at you know how many projects are happening, how many missed milestones, uh, and you know the critical issues with your with your different projects. Uh, if you have changes associated with these projects, you will see them here. Uh, if you have improvement initiative, etc. And then you have uh, what you need into the run. So these are your performance snapshot. Uh, again, if you go to the KPI, it will show you uh, how these uh, data points are captured and calculated. Um, and then you're able to see how your particular uh, underpinning services are also performing. So, so now Jose wants to go back and he's just been told that he will be responsible for managing the knowledge base as well. So his team, he needs to create a team to be able to do that. So he's going to be now leading the uh, knowledge bases. So um, so he's going to own that. He can write the description. He's going to add a few, one person to edit. So I like to have Fred, uh, Fred Luddy, uh, our founder. This one is still in the demo data. Uh, and then we can include a few people. So include uh, Mary and uh, in my team. So assuming they're in my team, we get a few viewers uh, of that portfolio. Uh, again, keep in mind that um, you know this is only possible if uh, um, uh, if we do have uh, these um, access to the business application. I believe it's right here in services. So he will take on. Uh, this one, he will take on this one, this one, and this one. Actually, not this one because he doesn't own that one yet, whereas the others he does. So that's already been assigned as part of the service. So we're going to be adding these items. So now we can go and review the portfolio. Oh, I'm getting this error here. It's annoying. And with that, uh, he has, you can see here the portfolio detail. We don't have a description. We know the owner. 
uh, we've given Fred Luddy the editor. So again, he can choose uh, if I were to, to log in as Fred Luddy and say, I don't want the HR database, he could actually remove it. Uh, it doesn't change anything to the service. It's just, he's just one of those who, uh, along with jo Jose, uh, can choose what to include in that service, uh, in that portfolio. So now uh, I've created the portfolio. So it tells me the services that are included. It doesn't give me anything that needs attention at the moment, but when I look at my um, data, so now I have a personal portfolio and anything that comes uh, on any, if I were to create an incident on the HR database, um, then uh, like a P1 incident, then it would come into the things that need attention. So one of the things we can also look at once the data load uh, is basically here, view the relationship. So what we're able to pull here is the dependency between the, the services and the underpinning service. Uh, and again, um, if I were to go back to the earlier example that we had on the, um, which one was it that we went through, the Porsche online? As you can see, this is a, an unscripted demo I'm giving you at the moment, so. <laughs> okay, I have a question. So yeah. just now you added the knowledge base and can could select HR or IT. So yeah. let's say let's say we wanted to see for incident and problem. So we would need to add those, right? Then that then only we can see the count. Like if you just now you explain we added HR knowledge and then if we create incident through the knowledge um, module, then we can see. We can, yeah. we can see the linkages. So is it similar if we wanted to see more for problem, incident? Yeah, change? absolutely, absolutely. I see. Okay. So, so you, you would need to, um, so at the moment, uh, I don't know if there's any, and again, it's demo data. Okay. So if there were already um, a P1 incident, so for instance, if I go to, to this application um, and into the run, uh, there should be, so here, um, so we see that we do have, uh, you know, some issues associated with that particular application. And then uh, all of these here, um, so, and, and then you can filter your need attention. So you can look at your critical outage that are associated with that particular service. Um, and then you can go and look at the outages associated uh, with your order status, provided that you're using that. Um, and um, yeah, so otherwise it lists everything here. Is there any way we can narrow down the condition? Like maybe incident, we just wanted to see by particularly certain affected CI for yes, change. Absolutely. So these are the conditions. So when you configure, so like here it's, uh, okay. uh, it would be related. So one of the things is that it's con it needs to be related to the order status. Mm. Uh, that is uh, one of the dependency of the Porsche online. So all of these dependency you can design. I see. Yeah. And this one is only on P1 incidents. Mm. Uh, if you want to see your P2 incidents, this is a configuration that you would do. Okay. Okay. So, um, so that's basically what the digital portfolio management is all about. So a few things I wanted to... Um, I wanted to show you. Uh, so this is part of the new uh, sidebar that we added. So you can create, uh, so when you add sidebar, uh, you can now have collaboration with um, uh, other people in your organization, uh, you know, like for a, from a support perspective. One of the things we've also added is the help. Uh, and if you go to the help here, help for resources, uh, here, it will get you to managing roles, what we have in our customer success center, our community product documentation, our video library, some of the things. So it takes you right here into uh, the role FAQ. So it will give you all of the details that you need in terms of best practices for a role. Uh, and then uh, if you click on videos, it will take us to our YouTube channel. 
uh, with all of the video that we have for ServiceNow support. So again, capabilities within making it a lot easier for you to um, get to know the product better. Uh, and then you have notifications. So if you're getting notification for a particular service, they're all coming here. Uh, again, minimizing, uh, minimizing receiving a lot of notification onto your uh, email inbox. So this is some of the capabilities of working within the service operation workspace or the new interface that we've created, making it a lot easier to, uh, to have access to all of the information that you need at your fingertips. So with that, I'm just going to go back to the PowerPoint and um, let me just share the PowerPoint again. Zoom, share. And PowerPoint, let me put that in presenter mode. So uh, let me just show you here some of the things we've seen. So um, let me just unhide them so I'll go and give you an overview of what you've seen. Um, uh, should I, no, let me just unhide. Sorry to do that to you. No problem, take your time. I, I thought I would give you some of the things, um, making it clearer what we've been through in this session today. So we started with the um, uh, portfolio. Uh, the, so we started with the landing page of the uh, need attention and what, um, you know, the, the home page of the digital portfolio management uh, and what are uh, the different items or elements that are presented into the page. So basically the needs attention um, widget with the uh, personal portfolio in the enterprise portfolio. And it really helps the solution owner to be able to have you know, access to the information that matters in terms of what's the health of the service. So if you remember the first quote that uh, I started the session with, you know, as a service owner or as a CIO or as a CTO, I only know uh, or I assume that my customer are happy because my phone is not ringing, I'm not getting escalation um, and, and the like. So um, this is where they will be able to say what's hot in their services and what's being impacted and being able to improve it uh, you know, fast or react faster. So the enterprise portfolio, again, at the enterprise level, we're looking at your IT services uh, that are uh, mapped in your CMDB at the, at the enterprise node. Uh, and that is, we'll have all the service owners or the, that are named in the CMDB, will be able to see the services that are, that are owned for the enterprise. We, uh, and that is an example. Uh, of uh, you can also create a uh, personal portfolio. That's the other part we went in, uh, creating a personal portfolio. And again, this is uh, really uh, for a service delivery manager may have different port you know different application or different uh, technology services that his team support. Uh, he does not own them, but needs to support them, need to assign resources, need to know what's happening in his um, part of the, uh, in his work. And so creating personal portfolio will help these people make sure that they have the right information. Very good. May I know, is there any uh, numbers of limit that we can create for portfolio, maybe for 15 only? No, 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 no. You can create, so there's no limit. You can create as okay. many portfolios as you need. So uh, again, the more you create, the more, you know, you have the maintainability of your data. Right. That's, a, that's another uh, challenge. So right. you still try to harmonize, but especially mm. you know, uh, every service delivery manager in your mm -hmm. organization should be able to create his or her personal portfolio I to see. collect the data that they need. Okay. Yeah? And is, is that something that actually, because for easy maintenance, can we control through the grouping? It's like maybe we can group certain people uh, in one team, then when they log in, so the, the portfolio will be displayed for the same, for the same, those people that in, under the same group. 
Absolutely. So this is where, you know, uh, when we created that knowledge-based portfolio, I added mm -hmm. an editor and I added uh -huh, uh, okay. the viewers. So that's where you would put your viewers. Is it allowed, like, one person has multiple portfolio? Yes. Okay. Any example of how that person can switch between, like, if i being been granted two portfolio, how can I easily switch to, to one, from one to the other? So, um, so if you go back here, uh, let me just go back to the personal portfolio. So I can come here and see all of my, so Jose can come in here and see all of the uh, business application or business services associated with, uh, in, uh, attached to this portfolio, each one of them. Excuse me, Natalie. I think I'm viewing your presentation uh, hang slide. On, hang on, sorry. Okay. That's, no a sharing, that's a sharing thing because I'm sharing. Yeah, yeah. it's happened. Okay. Let me just go back. Uh, hang on a second. Let me just come back here. Share. Uh, no, hang on. Share. Where's my Chrome? Chrome is here. Share. Okay, I could see that. So, so if I go back, so here I am at home. Okay. I go back to the personal portfolio. Okay. So okay, is, got it. So you <laughs> saw that one was already created, and that's the one we just created in this session. So if you're here, you see all the uh, services that are associated with e-commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, there's business application, there's business services. So he's got a few, few of them. Some of them. Uh, so if you look at uh, at the Porsche online and you look at the at the relationship, uh, you see all of the others are basically. Uh, attached to the Porsche online uh, application. Okay, uh, great. And then, because we've just created the um, the knowledge base, he can come here and say, uh, you know, what do I have here in terms of plan, in terms of what's happening, in terms of build, and uh, it, he'll get that visibility. And then again, uh, we can look at the relationships. So the knowledge bases consists of two: one is HR, one is uh, and then you can you can drill down uh, and um, you know open these records as well, right? So you can imagine as a service delivery manager, you would group in a portfolio application and services that are similar, uh, and uh, but they can you know each service delivery manager can have multiple um, uh, multiple portfolio, mm -hmm. and then. If the service delivery manager and his, you know, uh, right hand, you know, his deputy and the other, you know, people who need to have that visibility. So keep in mind um, uh, not to confuse because you wouldn't give that to every technical support people, right? Um, you would, uh, the technical support people, you know, when they log in and, you know, I'm Lakshmi, I can impersonate Lakshmi here. Um, uh, I would, uh, you know, I'm a first, I'm a first level support. Uh, I, I, you know, I will go to my service operation workspace and, um, So ask me as a service desk person. And uh, when she comes into service now, she does not go into the digital portfolio. She works on tickets. She wants to see the information that's relevant to her. She works on the solution, on the, uh, you know, what we call the service owner workspace. Uh, the service operation workspace, sorry. Uh, and that's where she is, service operation. What she sees is the information that's relevant to her, uh, you know, whatever is assigned to um, assigned uh, to her, the SLAs, um, unassigned tasks. So she comes and see all of the things that she's working at the moment. Uh, if uh, because this one we have uh, W uh, workforce optimization enabled. If there's any learning assigned to her uh, or any. Uh, coaching uh, or mandatory training, she can come and, and, and do them. Uh, she's got the list of all of the uh, issues um, that are uh, part of her group, the group, and then she can create her own uh, list as well. 
Uh, and so because she's just logged in uh, and we have advanced work assignments, uh, she will start getting incidents coming in so she can look at uh, which one she will uh, monitor first. Uh, she's like, this one I will reject. It, it will go somewhere else. And uh, and I will accept this one. And then she can reject that one as well. So she works on, on an, you know, because other people can take advantage of the other tickets while she's working on this one. Um, and then she can uh, actually do the investigation on this particular incident uh, and uh, look at what's happened to it and, and work on it. So that's a typical service desk uh, person. But in the case, and they have all of the information that they need, again, at their fingertips to, um, to look at um, with the agent assist. I'm not sure if I have the... Um, uh, I'm not sure if I have. So here we have all of the catalog items that might actually solve the issue. Uh, she can go and look at a similar open incident, um, et cetera, or she can go into uh, knowledge articles that might actually help her to actually solve that record. So this is basically a service desk person environment would be the service operation workspace. Whereas where we were uh, previously with Jose, uh, this, he is not a service, um, he's not a, a technical hands-on person solving tickets. He is there managing services and the health of his services. So he would be working here, having all of the information that he uh, needs to have. If he manages team, uh, you know, he can also, if he were to manage teams uh, that are involved in changes and all that, he has a, a, you know, a team manager view uh, that he can also see. So in terms of in terms of roles, you would keep that you know to uh, that you would uh, assign the digital portfolio management. Basically, the roles that you highlighted, like the portfolio owners, uh, the application owners, the um, service delivery managers, and perhaps you know one or two people in their team that need to have uh, access to the more holistic view. Yeah, that is interesting. Yes, ever since we enabled the service operation workspace, so there yeah, are people from my company as well, they ask, hey, like when I don't want to see that much, any specific kind of like portfolio that I can configure. Yeah. So I think this DPM is really... That would be for them, yeah. Yep, really for them. Yeah, so that's uh, that's your that would be your typical, you know, team lead and... Um, you know, the, the service delivery managers, definitely. And the application owners as well, uh, they will, I think, get value out of this. So some of the things uh, to get started, if you don't have a CMDB, it's a waste of time. So because everything, you know, it, it, you really need the CMDB, you really need, you don't need to have a perfect CMDB, by the way. So let's not get uh, uh, overwhelmed, but you need to, um, have some kind of services or business services or technology services already you, you know, mapped into your CMDB to be able to then create your service offerings and, and, and be able to have your portfolio. So, um, so I would say you know, if you're not yet started on your uh, CMDB health um, journey, I'd say perhaps do some work because this is more of a more mature view of uh, um, uh, of your estate. So um, you need to, to have the right foundation. So if you have that, you, you, you will look at, um, at saying, okay, so for that part, we have these services mapped in our CMDB. Uh, we know the service owners, we know the delivery managers, and then you can use uh, those as your um, initial pilot project for rolling out DPM. Uh, so one of the things you will say, well, I need to assign roles. So who has access to DPM? So uh, we've got two roles in the system. One is a DPM manager and the other one is a DPM admin. So to configure uh, some of the uh, pages that, that we've shown, that I've shown you, uh, a, DP, a DPM admin uh, can, can do that. So you don't really need this, the um, service now developers to do that for you. I would say let them do that for the first rollout. But then if you 
um, if you want uh, to make changes, um, you can, you know, you potentially could have the DPM admin role and you do that for servicing all of your, um, you know, service owners and uh, solution owners into your organization. So again, just make sure so the DPM admin only has uh, responsibility for the the application, the DPM application, none of the underlying data. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, so when you're a DPM admin, you can go and look at what are the page on the pages that already exist for DPM. What are the things that you will uh, show and hide? And it's just you know setting those to true or false. So for instance, when I showed you the needs attention. I said audits and risks. If you don't have our integrated risk management, you won't be able to see them. So you can hide these uh, tabs uh, or these uh, drop downs uh, from from the user. So that again, it minimizes the because if you give that if you give it to them, they'll say, well, why I have no risks? Um, and you know, it's the dependency on other data points that you may not have into into your organization. Uh, and then you're going to look at the KPI groups. So I would say start with what is there and match it to your data. And for instance, one of the things, if you don't use outage or the outage record um, in ServiceNow, you won't be able to calculate availability. So some of the things that it may lead to is to create you know, an improvement initiative to roll out the, um, um, you know, the continual improvements. Uh, and then you verify your, your indicator data uh, and confirm that you have the actual breakdown. So that requires performance analytics. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with performance analytics. I'll be doing a session in July on that. So make sure to keep your eyes open for that one. Yep, sure. Uh, we'll keep my eyes <laughs> on and, that, uh, attending that. Uh, and uh, because you, you would need to, to know a little bit of uh, performance analytics to be able to uh, adjust those KPIs. Right. Actually, we use PPA right now. And normally, yeah. if any indicators that need require, so we will get developer to develop that. Yeah, but you can do it yourself. You don't need to rely on developers. So right, right. I wish it could. <laughs> so so we'll, we'll, we'll get you started on that one. So Okay, but, looking forward for that. <laughs> so this, uh, this deck will be available uh, on the community after this session. Uh, so you have all of the links, um, and and as I showed you, basically from the platform, you can access can get access to that. So there's a a couple of ones that I really highly recommend the YouTube videos, and especially the one on CSDM, uh, because understanding that the CSDM uh, it's a common service data model, and and you know we came up with that framework to uh, help organization manage their data. Uh, what we found is previously. The way a service was defined in strategic portfolio management versus what it was defined in service management had you know no relations whatsoever, um, and that created a lot of tension. So basically, uh, when we developed the CSDM, I think it was in 20, 2017 or twenty eighteen, uh, we went through that journey of really you know we wanted that common service data model across the platform. Uh, and, and we call it the glue that makes all of our products stick together. Uh, and it's super important to uh, you know, get started on that, to have a, a good CMDB house, uh, as well as you know, we can then benefit it even more uh, when we get to our service management, when that data is there. Um, I'm just gonna ask uh, a poll. Um, I'm gonna start it just because I want to make sure it works. Uh, no, we're still there. Hang on a second. Up and um, back. I would just like to have your answer where you are going with that. And hopefully, yeah. Yeah. As far as I know, <laughs> especially the CMDV now. Right. So that's what I was expecting. And um, it's okay. That's where most of the <laughs> customers are. Uh, but I think, again, I want to highlight to you, don't wait until uh, you have a perfect CMDB. This is like um, mm. you know, trying to seek nirvana. So 
uh, if you already have services at our maps, I think that you can already get started with your digital portfolio adoption. Right, right. Because to wait until it have a perfect CMDB, I think we don't know when it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> but so at least you can start, you know, look yeah. at the services that are there, start getting value to those right. uh, uh, to those uh, service delivery managers that, um, you know, where the services are mapped. You do mm. continual improvement, then become your champion. And then, um, you know, you, you, can, you can continue to improve your CMDB as you start rolling that out for some of these application owners and service managers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Of course, we have expert services and training if you need help. And uh, I hope you found this um, session useful. Indeed, it is very useful and clear for me. 